Hello, Brother Andre here. Welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts and to the uh, alpha testing campaign for uh, the Dreadnought Improvement Project, where I have taken control of the Marshall Islands. Uh, it's now September 1909. In terms of the fleet, um, we're getting on pretty well. Uh, the two new battle cruisers are on the way. Uh, yeah, um, which is good. And uh, we can now move on to attacking the last German uh, kind of outpost in the Pacific, Western Samoa. And we should be able to launch the invasion of it instantly as well. Yes, we can. Excellent. So, we're going to get on with that. Uh, Politics-wise, how are things looking for the Germans? Not great. <laughs> they only have six ships. They must have... I don't know what Germany's been up to. They must have done really poorly against Spain. Although, Spain doesn't ha exact, exactly have a lot either. Um, Italy doesn't have very much. We actually have a reasonably sized fleet. Now, I guess people have gotten into wars and it's uh, significantly... In fact, even Britain doesn't have very much. Uh, in terms, they've got loads of money. They've got 10 billion in the bank. So I'm not quite sure why they're not spending it. Um, actually, one thing I could do... A um, couple of channel members, mainly... Uh, well, uh, members of the Discord, I mean, have been uh, designing ships. So... I'm going to pause the recording. I'm going to go check to see if I've got any more, and I'm going to load them in, and let's see if that helps. <laughs> All right, welcome back. Uh, we've taken Western Samoa, uh, which means the Germans don't really have anything else that we are particularly interested in. Uh, so I'm prepared to talk peace with them. Uh, I'm going to send uh, the fleet back and... Um, I'm going to split the fleet into a uh, the modern Dreadnought fleet and the reserve uh, pre-Dreadnought fleet. And uh, we'll, we'll do a little bit of a refit, I think. Um, I do want to check the politics screen. I did load in the extra designs. Um, Britain is at least building some stuff. Austro-Hungary is going crazy. Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, Italy's still uh, not building anything. But Ger Germany is building 12 ships and they now have 6 battleships. Okay, good. Um, let's talk uh, peace with Germany, shall we? We've taken their entire Pacific uh, Empire. Holdings, whatever you want to call it. Let's see if they agree. Ah, success. Good, 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 good. Uh, Burundi. Hmm. How far away? Oh, no, that's a long way away. <laughs> that is a very long way away. <laughs> and also landlocked. <laughs> Amusing, though, that would be. I don't think we should try and take anything off them. Again, amusing to take Heligoland. Oh, the Yorick! Oh, yes. Look how cheap their battleships are. Okay, you are really behind the times, Germany. Get with it. No, we'll just take the money. Because uh, we uh, obviously got a lot of territory off them, which is which is great. Uh, China is getting up to... Yes, that seems about right. How close are we to war? Uh, not super close. But I think Italy will get dragged in. Uh, and then maybe France as well. And then we might get end up getting pulled in at some point. Or, well, the United States quite likes us. So does Britain, actually. We should have pretty good relations in general. With everyone now. Except for China. Yes, well, China is big and scary at the moment. <laughs> like, hmm. 
What the hell with Rush, the Soviet Union, by the way? Oh, the border gore is strong. <laughs> Very strong in this timeline. Yikes. Um, okay. I'm going to wait another turn. Uh, actually, another couple turns. And then when I'm ready for the refits, uh, I'll see you guys again. Okay. Uh, welcome back. Uh, obviously, it's peacetime now. Um, so I've adjusted the budget so that we've got a little bit spare to do these refits. Uh, we've got plenty of... Sp well, we don't actually have plenty of spare ship building capacity. We've got a fair bit. Um, obviously, we're still building the two battle cruisers. So, really, I want to refit all of the ships I designed in the first episode. Um, they're all sitting here in Maizuru, uh, and the new ones are sitting here in Sasebo. So, should be easy enough. Um, uh, the other thing I was going to do... I'm not going to be refitting the Shimikazes because of the problems with the guns. So I'm actually going to mothball these and sell them off. Uh, that's the plan. <laughs> I wish you could do this uh, in a batch, but you can't. You have to do them one by one. Do, 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 do. So we'll start selling these um, to our allies. Because uh, we have the Asanagis in, in service, and they are much better. Right, uh, let's start with the Kanko. I think uh, we should be able to give it a, a reasonable uh, little upgrade. Uh, new lease of life. There's no gun upgrades for it at the moment, which is actually a good thing, because it means everything still fits. So, talking about Mark III's all round... Uh, we still are only on coal, but we can swap her to turbines. And now we're going to have to keep her induced on the boilers. Give her an auxiliary petrol engine. Uh, we can give her a better propeller shaft. We can upgrade our Harvey to Krupp armor. We can upgrade her barbette protection, anti-torpedo protection, uh, anti-flooding systems. Very nice. We can give her the capitalistic shells. We can swap out her gun cotton for TNT and the white powder for cordite. Uh, I think we have Electra Hydro turrets now, don't we? Yep. We can give her a better range finder, a radio, bigger torpedoes, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Um, I think that's a worthwhile upgrade. Yes, we've got a little bit of spare displacement, but I think that's fine. Oh, and the other thing we can do is we can make our guns 40 calibre um, to match the other 12-inch guns that we've got in the fleet. The barrel replacement. 40-40-35. Um, yeah, that looks, that looks fine to me. Okay. Good. Good. Just a cheeky, cheeky little upgrade. All right, let's save that, and uh, I'll get them refitting, and I'll load up the next one. Okay, next up are the Azumas, and I'm thinking a pretty similar upgrade uh, path for them. Just generally trying to get them... A little bit more survival and a little bit more deadly. TNT, cordite, uh, yeah, electrohydro turrets, 19 inch torpedoes, better range finder, better radio. Very good. And those three inch guns, can we get them to 40? No. 35 is fine though. Uh, yes, that's, that's it. Very, very easy to do. Yeah, one of the things with this mod, because uh, changing the armor doesn't change how much displacement you have. Uh, it just makes the armor stronger. Uh, you don't have these massive changes in weight when you refit, unless you're changing, like, an engine tech or something. Um, so, yeah. Pretty... 
pretty decent. All right. Um, sure. Done. Uh, right, next is going to be the light cruisers. Ah. <laughs> okay, things might be a little harder on the Kitakami. Um, because it apparently has these dirt-testically thick uh, three-inch guns. So, yeah, I think the Kitakamis are... We don't have a replacement yet. I mean, I do have other light cruiser hulls. Yes, we're going to exit without saying. I do have other light cruiser hulls. Um, but none of them are really that appealing. We should get a scout cruiser soon-ish, I hope. Uh, well, not any time particularly soon. I just, yeah, I don't really want to invest in protected cruisers at this point. The Kitakamis are fine for what they are. I don't think we're going to be getting a huge amount from a new one. It's annoying that the guns don't fit. Um, I don't know. Anyway, we can't afford really afford it. So, <laughs> let's get the tech budget back up. 80% seems, seems fine. And, uh, well, I guess uh, I'm going to prepare for war with China. Uh, I think we're in a pretty good state if we end up at war with China. Um, there, where are they? No, genuinely, where are they? <laughs> yeah, here we go. <laughs> Four battleships, nine heavies, six lights, ten destroyers, nine torpedo boats. So they've got a reasonable fleet. Um, in terms of attack, we're really going to be relying on the army pushing pushing out because I think uh, all of the provinces they have have got really large ports on them. Yeah, they do. So there's not going to be much in the way of naval invasions from us. We're going to have to just destroy their fleet and then hope that the army isn't terrible. Um... And that's pretty much it. Oh, the Soviets have taken the Sacklins. Okay. Well, war with the Soviets could also be potentially interesting, but I don't think they hate us at the moment. No, they don't. They actually quite like us. Interesting. Germany is getting uppity again, but any potential war with Germany is just going to be a bit of a nothing, nothing burger because, yeah, the closest stuff they have is all the way over here in Tanganyika. Um, I mean, which we could, of course, go and attack, which would be funny. But uh, we're not quite at that level of power projection. So, yep, just going to sit back and uh, maybe maybe we'll get a new hull or something uh, so we can do some designing. Okay, it's now October of 1911 and war it is. Okay. Oh, and we immediately get two new battlecruiser hulls. Jesus. Okay. Um, no, stop ordering battlecruisers. Do, 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 do. Oh my god. There we go. Right. Uh, now China has taken Sarawak, which is definitely something that we can uh, we can go and attack. We probably don't need too much uh, to go and do it either. Uh, but we won't be able to launch it straight away. We need to deal with their fleet. Uh, their fleet, I think I think the AI is uh, scrapping ships too aggressively. Um, I don't know how to tone that down, but I'll, I'll look and see if I can. They only have four Battleships and four heavy cruisers. I say only. That's still significant. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm... I think the reserve fleet, actually, which is sitting here, this is enough to launch an invasion. So I'm going to send them down to Sarawak. Really? Really? Uh, except the destroyer, which is going to stay at home. <laughs> um, and the rest of the fleet is... We're just going to stay in port for now. And we're going to whack onto sea control. And let's see if we can generate any battles. Obviously, we're going to hit our crew training to maximum. And we're going to use this... Uh, okay, not that much. Um, 
going to use the spe oh no 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 we need to have a look at those designs there's new hulls that have unlocked the two and the three okay well i feel like the the two is is very much a departure from established japanese design principles so i think the battle cruiser 3 makes a lot more sense uh this thing can go up to 30 knots potentially it's to be very large at 31,000. Let's go for 30. I think 30 is a reasonable size. Um, 3,000 tons more than the Arakawa Nakas. Uh, and let's initially target 28 knots. Uh... Right, I'm going to do a back-to-front build. <laughs> right, guns. We do have the 14-inch Mark II, but I don't think that this is the right ship to deploy a brand new gun system on. We also have triples, but they're the base triples. So we're basically going to build a slightly enlarged Araka. Arakawa Naka. The Norikura. Yes. Da, da, da. With a medium barbet. Well, it's going to have a long schnoz. <laughs> it's almost uh, Yorick like with its long front end. Kind of love it. If we have loads of spare displacement, then I'll uh, I'll think about bigger guns. It just feels weird putting them on a battle cruiser. Um, oh, it can't fit three inch casements. Oh, okay. So this is going to be the uh, design where the neighbor's like, we do. Um, we want those seven inch guns, damn it. <laughs> okay, I can live with that. Uh, two big funnels. Oh. Is there a way of getting them? A little more height matched. Yes. No. No, I actually think it looks better like that. They're very slightly stepped, but the same width. I actually think that looks okay. Uh, okay. We can now use semi oil. Very exciting. Uh, turbines, of course. Natural boilers. That's also very nice. Balanced. Uh, crit one. We've not unlocked anything since I was doing the refits earlier in the episode. I think standard ratio still. Uh, Cordite 2 is new though. So Cordite 2 compared to Cordite 1, um, it's not as good as Cordite 1 in terms of its hitting power, but it is noticeably safer, uh, which is good. All right, uh, we've got a fair amount of displacement left, and we haven't started filling with the armor, so that's that's good. So 12-inch 40s, 7-inch 45s, and 3-inch 40s. Lovely. Right, the 12-inch tw gun. Okay, 12 inches of armor is pretty good. That's 10,000 meter protection. That should be fine. Uh, protecting against our own 7-inch guns, we want a 6-inch 4.5 belt. That's going to be heavier than the preceding class. Deck, 1.5 is fine. Let's go 3, uh, just just to be on the safe side. Uh, conning Tower, let's go 14, 14, I don't know, 4, 14, something like that. Uh, we will have some inner layers, though, which is nice. And, yeah, we're kind of there at 94%. And that means we can get other nice-to-haves, like 30 knots. Mac Ugh, no, I can't do maximum bulkheads. Let's go 28 knots maximum bulkheads. Yeah, 
we'll go for that. So maximum bulkhead. So this is tougher uh, than the Arakawa Naka. Basically addressing some of the concerns. Valid concerns, I'm sure, that uh, the Admiralty had about the uh, first battlecruiser design in that it didn't have the 7-inch secondary battery that is common on the battleships, and it maybe lacked a little in protection. All fixed at the cost of uh, 3,000 tons and $30 million, which uh, seems pretty reasonable to me, actually. Pretty reasonable. And this is actually making our... Battleships, the Fusos, look pretty bad because this is arguably even better protected and faster with a slightly more firepower because <laughs> we've got two extra 7-inch guns on this. Uh, so, yeah, I think this would definitely meet with approval and uh, I kind of love the look of it with that enormous deck space. Very Yorick like um it's not a yorick level uh because we're only using the 12 inch guns we're not using anything bigger um but uh yes very very nice very nice okay if i can afford to build two of them i will see you in a moment yes indeed uh nokikura and shiomi under construction uh they're going to be 20 months so they're probably not going to be ready by the end of the war um, but really, now it's a case of ending the turn and uh, seeing if we get some action. Please, please, please. <laughs> okay, we do have a fight. I'm also losing money uh, because I have ships at sea and all the rest of it. Um, so I'm going to have to uh, probably cut back on the tech budget, to be honest. We're spending an awful lot of money on uh, research. Um, I think I also should be able to to, yep, launch the invasion of Sarawak immediately, which is really helpful. Um, we also have... Yeah, we've got decent power protection. We don't have anything in the Yellow Sea, but we shouldn't need too much there, I hope. <laughs> um, maybe redirect some ships. Because uh, otherwise I'm going to get a bit nervous and put a destroyer over there. Right. What have we got? A large convoy raid. The pack and the Fujian against the Kita and the Asanagi. Okay. So the first capital ship we actually get to see in action is our newest, the Arakawa Nakas. Interesting. Okay, let's have a look at the pack here. Uh, Sahuda class battleship. It's using very old armor. That's a pre dreadnought. That is a proper pre dreadnought. Let's be kind to the Chinese and let's evaluate it as a pre dreadnought of the era. So, two twin 10.2 inch guns. It's not bad. Four twin 7 inch guns. So, very similar to a Kanko. And then, weirdly, four single sixes. And then 10, 3. So, not dissimilar to a Kanko class. A little bit slower and has a slightly weird secondary setup. What about this heavy cruiser? Uh, okay. Interesting. Both, of the, they're all pre Dreadnought era. That's the main thing. <laughs> That's the main thing, and all those transports. That is that is a lot of that is a lot of uh, damage we can do if we can sink all thirty of those transports. Oh, it's night time. Okay. Well, Kita, do us proud. <laughs> Oh, 
saw them very briefly. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, sweet Lord, not that hole. <laughs> no, China. Oh, gold. And you can see they're having a revolution, by the way. They're now communist. What on earth? This is absolutely hilariously bad. I mean, they're probably not actually that bad. They just look awful. And they look extremely out of date. Like I say, Kita, your job is to engage them. Asanagi, your job is to find those transports. Now, these things are super slow. So, we could probably slow down to 15 knots if we wanted. Get a really nice accuracy boost. See if we can just take them out at range. We're close enough. Oh, don't target switch. Actually, which one is the battleship? I think it's this one. Let me get them to target the battleship. Ooh, 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 ooh. No, 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 no. Leave my little destroyer alone. Thank you very much. Because of the torpedo, they are torpedo threat. They are very seriously angry with it. <laughs> I want to try and keep the torpedo in reserve. Hmm, bouncing off the armor, or just getting blocked, or not hitting? Can't tell. Whoa! <laughs> okay, it might be out of date. That is a lot of armor. Jeez. What about on the cruiser? Not nearly as much. Okay, kill the cruiser first. And also accelerate up speed because you're letting them get a little too close for comfort. Oh, what a shot! Main belt pen. 11,000 damage. Very nice. That might actually just completely cripple that ship. Boom. Another main belt pen. Didn't do as much. But yeah, they're dead in the water. They're closed in. Extremely close. Five kilometers is pretty close range for a ship like this. Destroying a main gun. I think the angle is pretty bad now. Give them one more salvo. Yeah. Go for the battleship. Keep kiting away. The Asanagi, though, could potentially come back and uh, drop a torpedo on the Fujan to finish her off. And the angle's really bad at the moment. Try uh, HE. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that worked. Took out their fire control. Keep, uh, keep kiting them. Casement. What kind of rangefinder have they got? Winston's one, they do have one. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not doing too much with the HE, but it is starting to hurt them. See if we can put some torpedoes into the uh, 
few gen. She really is dead in the water. Any auxiliary engine on her? Hmm, not that I can see. Speed away. Right, go back looking for the transports. One detonates. The other one. Bosh. 14,000 damage. And goodbye, cruiser. Good. Well, that's a really good test because that's exactly how <laughs> torpedoes should work when you've got a destroyer and a crippled heavy ship. That's exactly what should happen. Dead in the water. No way for you to avoid them just coming in, breaking the back of your ship. Again, I'm just skirting at the edge of the battleship's effective range, I think. Yeah, they're finding it very hard to hit. So are we, because we're target locking, apparently. There we go. I don't really want to do anything silly like closing in, because that 10-inch gun probably can hurt me. Oh, no, it can't. Not really. Why not? Palestine. Okay, we can maybe afford to get a little closer then. Slow up again. Get some accuracy going. Still firing HE, of course, because they're nose into me. Oh, yes. Took out the main tower completely. They are flooded a little bit. Oh, blow up their torpedo. That's maybe what they're trying to do. They're trying to... Well, they're trying to get cl close to me because the guns aren't super effective, so they're probably trying to close torpedo range. And keeping bow in does make sure, especially with that armor scheme. <laughs> I mean, it's basically what that armor scheme is designed to do. Just burn down their upper works, though. Shaking the ship apart is uh, a strategy, I suppose. The hell are those transports? destroy the battleship before I can use the uh, AI control trick. Yeah, we're just throwing shells at the pack, but it's my chance to pen here. Hmm. Slightly better than I expected. Oh, it's still only showing the superstructure and stuff. Oh, she's turned uh, side on. Try an AP salvo. Is she turning away, maybe? Maybe thinking about retreating. She is quite da badly damaged. Ricochet. I mean, we are taking hits in return here, so I need you to make this count. Lovely. Main belt pins all over and sunk. Perfect. Okay, where... Really? That way? You sure? Okay. I'll leave them on AI control. Let's see if we can find those transports. And uh, I'm going to cue the music.
well. <laughs> that did not go well uh, for, for the Chinese at all. Uh, the pack, very out of date. Fujian, very out of date. But 13 transports to boot. That's going to be an ouch. Right. Um, obviously, Nikita at the top of that table. Mega accuracy, about 29%. Um, probably lower before we engage the transports. Um, the pack was about 12%. That feels okay. Feels about right. I, I know um, if, you, if you're watching the battles and you're like, whoa, but it's got like 80% accuracy. It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> look at the um, look at the accuracies actually at the end of the battle. It gives you a much more accurate kind of uh, no pun intended uh, <laughs> picture of uh, how likely you are to be hitting. But for a combat, that was pretty fun. That was pretty fun. The pack tried her best, played to her strengths of that very strong forward armor, um, crazy good belt armor to try and close in. But the, the key is just too fast. There's no way she could manage that. We're just able to take out her ability to shoot. Um, really damage her her fighting capability. And then, yeah, she turned away. Because she was taking too much damage. And then she was side on. And we were able to just go straight through the belt and sink her. Lovely. And, uh, yeah, for the, uh, the cruiser. Where is it? The Fujian. Even better. Just... You know, it takes a battleship round to the face, <laughs> or to the side, more accurately, and uh, is crippled, and then finished off by a couple of torpedoes, one of which exploded early, um, but one of which hit, so, yeah. Pleased. Very pleased. Right, back to the map. Right, welcome back. Uh, I normally skip these in vanilla dreadnoughts the uh post battle summaries but i, I wanted to pick it up because the twenty three thousand six hundred eighty vp that was for sinking well i mean roughly a quarter of china's entire fleet so it's fair enough but yeah look how much 13 transports going down gives you now it is significant very significant if you're killing transports now um, it is worth your while defending them. Uh, it's worth the AI's while defending them. So straight away we uh, we we get uh, oh no okay it was included. Okay, so the reason we got twenty three thousand victory points is because we sunk a quarter of the fleet plus seven thousand of that was uh, from transports. That's still fine as far as I'm concerned. That that's all you know. Oh, okay, you lost two warships, that's that's really bad. You lost all the transports, that's also really bad. That's the way it should feel. Rather than the transports being worth, like, one victory point each or something, they're worth about 100 um, each base, uh, and then it can go up or down a bit, depending. Anyway, uh, fleet is on the way to invade Sarawak, so uh, I'm going to end the turn and see what happens. Well, one thing that happens is the Royal Navy is super impressed with us. <laughs> um, a free alliance. <coughs> yes, please. And we get a port strike. That's pretty handy. Okay. No. And it looks like we have a second port strike. Okay, that's that's a big battle. That's going to be in the next episode. Uh, what's my naval invasion chance? 100%. We like that. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Are these pack, uh, the Sahudas the same as the pack? Yes. And these are the same as the one that we sank. Okay, so these are not great. And against them, we have Fuso, Shikishima, Arakawa, Naka. And we know that the 12-inch uh, guns work eventually. Those battleships, though, there's three of them this time. Uh, and then we've got the three Nishins and three destroyers. Oh, that is going to be that is going to be an interesting one. Where, which port are we striking? Hi Chow. Uh, this one. 
Okay. Well, yeah, that's going to be that's going to be for for next time. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Apple Trick Bye for now.